Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What is up? Higher Learning is on. It is Ivan Lathan Jr. And it's me, Rachel and Lindsay. Rach, what is the science? You got something that you want to talk about. I love it. I what love is it the- coming in hot. Well, 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 I've I've had a crazy week and next week is going to be even more wild. It's a lot going on in LA. Got a lot of different shoots being being pulled this way and that way, but yesterday I had really fun interviews. So I was interviewing for um Issa Rae's new show Rap Shit, which is really good. You guys, I, you don't I don't normally come on here and promote movies and shows that you should see, but like Rap Shit is a really fun show and you guys should all check that out on HBO Max. Um, so that was a great interview. Then I saw the movie Nope. So I did the junket for Nope. And did then like I it? did. I did. I did. And then I uh, did later that night, I did the DC superheroes of pets or pets. Pets, um, pet superheroes. They got Batman's foot. Bozeman, come here. They got, uh, they got <laughs> Batman's dog. They got Superman's dog. It looks like a lot of fun. Well, so I was talking to the director about that and I did not, he was telling me this research and I said, you know, it makes sense. Humans have pets. Why do superheroes not? And he was like, well, yeah, everybody knows about crypto Superman's dog, but he said he was doing research for comic books back in the forties and the 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 fifties. And he realized that a lot of these superheroes did have pets. Some of them he made up, but some do. So it's a really interesting concept. And that was cool. And big names were with that Keanu Reeves, Kevin Hart, The Rock. But when I was doing the Nope Junket, which is Jordan Peele's new movie, which everyone should go see. It's so good. And the message behind it is great, too. Kiki Palmer, Dale Kaluuya. Uh, so I'm like, I'm talking to Kiki and like we're talking and we're doing our thing and catching up. And Dale just looks at me and I'm talking about Kiki's outfit. She's talking about my outfit. And then Dale, like, he's like, oh, oh. And he's pointing towards my outfit. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, is something wrong? Did I do something? And he goes van and i was like oh shit <laughs> he called you van he goes van it's van and he goes i go yeah i go you did our podcast Harlow. he's like i never forget a face he was like i did sh-. and i was like yeah you should come back anytime and he was like yeah you know like he had a good time on the podcast he was like yeah you do the podcast with van and i was like but it's rachel <laughs> It's Rachel. He but thought, I thought your didn't... name was Van? No, he knew my name oh. wasn't Van, but he remembered right. that he couldn't think of higher learning. Oh. He remembered you. So I thought you would appreciate that, that he was like, Van. And I was like, yes, you did our podcast, higher learning. You remember that? I was like, yeah, we had a really good interview with you. Didn't we see him again at the party that night? We, d- we- I didn't talk to him, did you? I th- yeah, yeah. Oh, you ran up to him? No, I didn't run up to him. <laughs> I've known Daniel. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't run up to him like I knew Daniel uh, from, but but yeah, he um, you know, so Rachel. It was really he, nice. It was it, a really it, nice Rachel, shout out. Like I want to share that compliment with you. Like he's like Van, and I was like, yes, I do the podcast with Van Higher Learning. But he was like, I never that was a good a that, was, that interview went up for us. That interview was yeah. Great. And I was like, you should come back. We we had a great interview with you. We loved having you. We are uh, we are talking about that interview. There's a lot of Black Panther stuff that was in that interview, and there's a lot of Black Panther news coming out right now. Are you excited for Black Panther Wakanda Forever? Are you excited for that movie? Well, the news just dropped, so that's disappointing. That Daniel that Kaluuya is not in it? He's not in it, and I got that information 10 minutes after my interview, which I totally would have asked him about. It's crazy. Um, can I say, I don't get nervous to interview people, but he makes me nervous to Why? do an interview. Because he's so smart and yeah. he's very like you, you could tell he thinks about things and he's just like yeah. deep and like introspective. And I just am like, am I gonna say something that sounds stupid? Because obviously my show is an entertainment show, and there's a lot of like, you know, like we like surface level. It's like we don't go deep. That's not the type of show we put out. So I just am like, am I embarrassing myself? I mm-hmm. he makes me nervous to do interviews. I used and to I don't have, say that often. I used to have jealousy for black British dudes. Oh, it's got to be more than the accent that made you jealous. Nah, it was just like it was just like they like. So there's this sketch on this Rick Ross mixtape, and the guy wasn't British. The guy wasn't black. I could tell he wasn't black, but he was British, and he was talking about all his expensive shit. People are gonna remember that he goes. Gucci loafers, boom, 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 socks, <laughs> boom. And he's talking about all the expensive shit that he wears. You know what I mean? And 
you know, I used to know this guy named Niall who mm-hmm. lived here in LA back in the day. He was from, I'd be like, he was a black British dude and like, come over here with that turtleneck being all cool. Like he, James Bond. And they would talk and it was, it was just, other, it was, a, they say bruv. They don't say bruv, they say bruv. And for some reason, oh, bruv, bruv seems superior to bruh. I say bro, you say bruv. I'm like, huh. You know what I mean? So, it so, I, so it is bruv, bruv. They hang out with WizKid. You know, they, they know. It's, it, I don't know. It, it, I, all of these guys, they got a cool <laughs> little crew. I'm going be, I'm to I'm be honest with you. Daniel and them got a cool little crew, man. It's Daniel, it's Damson. Of course, Drake's got to be in the crew. It's like all is of these. Is he in the guys, crew? Drake's probably in the crew. I'd say Drake's in that crew. I say they 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 got a killer little crew, man. I'm missing some guys, but they got like a they got like a killer crew. Like I, I like those guys, man. They're very very nice guys, very approachable guys. It's funny. Years I met. Uh, uh, shout out to Deray. I did Paul Save America this morning. So Deray took me to this party one time when I first met him some years ago, and Deray took me to the party, and that's where I met Daniel. And Daniel goes, "Oh yeah, you're the Kanye bruv. 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 Brother's is great. Um, Listen, I think it's great. And I love that he, you know, kind of gave a, a podcast a little shout out. He gave you a shout out in our podcast. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, How did you, makes me what nervous. did you think of, what did you think of Nope? What did you think of Nope? I thought it was really good. I think that this is what I'll say to people who are watching it. All Jordan Peele movies have a message, right? There's a deeper meaning. Um, don't watch it and wait for like something crazy to happen. There's a deeper message with it. So if you, you need to watch it in that sense, like trying to figure nah, out like, what is like he, that. what is he trying to say? No, no, things happen for sure. Yeah. I'm not going to say that they definitely do, but I like the message because there was a part where I was like, wait, why did they do that? It's because of the message that he's trying to put out there with it. But it's, it's, it's cool to see a black UFO movie. You don't, that's why he said he wanted to do part of it too. You don't really see that. We talked about UFOs. We talked like, I'm having to accept the fact that we're not alone. I don't like that. And I'm going to tell you something that happened. We were on, we were at Universal lot doing the, um, the interview and they have built an attraction from the movie on the lot. So we were on that set filming. And while I'm talking to Jordan, all of a sudden we both stop in the middle of the interview because a door started to creak or this this car thing was moving. Yeah. It was one of the two. And I was like, I'm ready to, I wanna go home. I'm you don't done. have to worry about the aliens ever coming for you because you're too much of a picky eater. Why does that the have a- to do with anything? What does that aliens, have to do with the, anything? The, the, the aliens are a nomadic species. They like variety. You don't know this. They like variety. They are absolutely. Wait a minute. If the aliens come here, they're by nature nomadic, Rachel. Do you know what? Do you know? Do you, do you know? Do you know what Hawking says about the aliens? No. Rest in peace to my dog, Stephen Hawking. Read some Stephen Hawking stuff. Hawking says that there is less than a 10% chance that the aliens are our friends. <laughs> Hawk, Hawk, like, like Hawking thinks that if the aliens are, are, are uh, taking all of this time to develop whatever type of technology that would be needed to go across the universe or whatever, be it maybe they can create a wormhole, maybe they have a hyperdrive, whatever it would take. If they can do that, then they're likely doing it because their planet is in need of resources and they're coming right here to take over ours. What if we're the aliens? What does that mean, Rachel? I don't know. But I do have two questions for you. <laughs> sure. I do have two questions for you. One, if aliens are watching us, which it's not an if for you, they are apparently. They're out there. Okay. And they're watching us. What do you out. think they're saying about us? I don't know. See, I think that we think that aliens perceive us like we perceive us. And the aliens are probably, in my opinion, there are certain cultural things about our civilization that they wouldn't understand. So they wouldn't understand why we're mad. They would probably look at us and be like, why are y'all mad? Y'all got waterfalls. You know? 
They probably look at us like we look at Mars. Like we look at Mars and we analyze what's on Mars. Mm -hmm. And in analyzing what's on Mars, we do it from a very numbers and figures standpoint. If there were people on Mars, do you know how long it would take us to understand the people on Mars? It would take a long time. I know the alien's been around for a while. And if they've tried to come down here and study us, which is why they don't want people who are picky eaters, because that would narrow their scope of education. They don't want to study somebody. They don't want to study someone that eats a pork chop, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They want somebody (laughs) to be able to teach them different foods. So, Rachel, you're not eating enough food. So, the aliens need somebody. Well, great. Then I'm fine. Wait, I have another question for you. What? I believe the answer is no for you. But do you know anyone who's had an experience with like an alien encounter, some extraterrestrial experience? See, the answer is yes. But For you? Or do you know someone? For I, the, I know someone. But like okay. I also come from a family that deals with substance abuse. So niggas be high. So you never know. It's like we're from Maringouin, Louisiana. We're from out there and the, and the aliens come out there because, you know, we cook many different foods, number one. And number two, when you jack somebody from the country, it's easy to get in and get out. That's kind so of I know nope. people, yeah, kind of, yeah, exactly. That's like and nope, so yeah. I know people that definitely say that they were, uh, that they had situations with aliens. I don't know if I believe them because. Maybe because they're high, they have a little bit more clarity. Like they're open to see those things. Or know? maybe. The aliens know that they get high. They've studied us enough to at least know that. And they know that nobody will believe them. What did they say they saw? They say that they saw a really bright star. Okay. And all of a sudden, the bright star got so close to the point to where it obviously couldn't be a star. Then all of a sudden, they were unconscious. And the only thing that they were meet, remember was getting pulled up by their back out of a sugarcane field. You get pulled up by their back out of a sugarcane field. They get pulled up out of their back and they felt like somebody was hugging their uh, their legs and their torso. And then when they woke up back in the sugarcane field, they were naked. <gasps> and more than one person has the same experience? Just one person. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just one person. Sugarcane fields out there in Maryland. The little alien took my sugarcane field. It yeah. sounds, it doesn't sound far-fetched. I mean, it does. I, I believe it. Look, my my job, my my motto is: you can't rule it out. You can't rule you can't it. Can't rule it out. You're right. You I, can't rule it out. It was funny when my dad was still living because he would just straight up like call you a dopehead to your face. <laughs> you know, you tell the story, he'd be like, "Hey, hey, son, go in there, and put your gun in the truck. That nigga on dope. We got no time for that. <laughs> <laughs> Drug addicts. So look, um. Addiction is a very sad thing, guys. We're not making light of it. But, you know, sometimes people in my family were kind of funny. Uh, I have a big, big, I want to do a postmortem on Dallas now, if that's okay. Oh, my. Your obsession with my city. I would like to do a postmortem on Dallas. The floor is yours? Is that okay, Rachel? The floor is yours. So people were telling me to go to different places in Dallas to eat. I went to a place called Hard Eight Barbecue which is kind of like a chain barbecue joint, still was hidden. I don't care what y'all say. I know I was supposed to go to Smokey and Ronnie's barbecue in the back alley of somebody's house. Smokey and, John's is where you should have been. Okay. I didn't get a chance to go there because we were shooting too long. We we got a lot of interviews in the four or five days we were in Dallas. That's good. Um, so I went to Hard Eight Barbecue, ate there a couple of times. It was still dope. It's kind of like a, it's got the three different Hard Eight Barbecues. Pecan Lodge? What's Pecan Lodge? What's that? Uh, it's a barbecue place. Never went. I I just told you where I went. I went to the Hard oh, Eight Barbecue. I, I thought you said you went to multiple places. Oh, I would no. They have three different places, but I only got a chance to go. To, I didn't get a chance to explore that much of Dallas, you know, um, because we had so much shooting to do. But I did walk around and go to Dealey Plaza, which you told me was far from my hotel, which is not far at all. I you never talk. Oh, that's the name of the JFK thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did say yeah. it's far. You said it was far. It's not far at all. Like I got to experience humanity as I walked by Greyhound Station and I, I walked down to Dealey Plaza and I saw where 
they shot JFK, which I had never seen it before. In my other times in Dallas, I never made it out to Dealey Plaza before. They really lined JFK right up there at a major intersection. From the book, to, and it's not a far shot. Is I looked at it, the shot, it's not a far shot. How the hung book. were you down there in the uh, and stuff? I'm going to be honest with you. I was down there investigating. <laughs> I was down there at Dealey Thinking Plaza. you were going to solve something? <laughs> I was at Dealey Plaza for at least like an hour and a half. And it was hot. Even though it was, I can't believe like, you were down there that long. I was, because look, the book depository is up here, right? And then they shot him like up the seat. And then there was the grassy knoll. The grassy knoll looks exactly like it looks on TV. You would think that they would change the knoll, but they didn't. No, no, no. And let it be known that you didn't think it was far because you literally will walk for five, six, seven miles. And it was, it's not even that far. It's still downtown. So for you, that's not far. Yeah, it's, it's 0.5 like a- miles away. It's not even it's not far <laughs> at all. Like, it's not, and the it's heat, like a, and the heat, it's a mile and a half. Sorry. So, so I was, uh, I was shadow boxing outside, you know, across the street from my hotel, where those statues of those <laughs> longhorns were, the cows, right? <laughs> and as I was shadow boxing, I looked over, and there was a little rabbit. I took a picture of the rabbit. I said to the Kalika, and I was like, wow. This is like a moment of Zen in, in Dallas. I've had a, I had a spiritual moment. I'm shadow boxing out there. I'm getting sweaty and the rabbit's just chilling, looking at me. It's a Texas rabbit. I felt like a oneness with Texas right then. Um, all it is to say that I am ridiculously disappointed that I did not get a chance to meet your parents in Dallas. Every time <laughs> I would pass by the little judge building because there's a federal office right around the corner from our hotel i told you that the federal building is right around the corner from me that's my dad's office right i would tell people i know a federal judge (laughs) i'm so believe me they're just as disappointed they're just as disappointed my mom constantly sends your posts in the family group chat because i'll look she'll it'll be instagram posts it's like van lathan and i'm like yeah, I know him. Oh. <laughs> I don't need to post his stuff in the chat. They How are they you. doing? A uh, much better, much better, much better. Yeah, they're all good. All good. Everybody's good. My sister has um, COVID though. Now she has COVID. Which one? So we talking about rim shot. The oldest one. The oldest one. Yeah, rim shot. Yeah. has COVID. Um, She's coming to L- she's coming to L.A. in a couple of weeks with the kids. Oh, what are you? What are you <gasps> oh gonna do? my gosh! If my nephew, you know, my nephew's obsessed with the Yo 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 Thought Warriors. Alexander. Might, yeah, it's yeah. Alistair. I thought it was Alexander. It's Alistair. <laughs> Alistair is Alistair is really the name of a comic book supervillain. Is it? I thought it was just British. Ah, it's like it's like it's always a name like a guy like Alistair who who figured out how to like harness the energy of a star and now he's going to use it to destroy Detroit. And like, you know what I mean? And Superman I love has to that. like- He's a superhero. He, uh, he's a, so, no, I said he's a super villain. Oh, <laughs> but don't they have powers too? Sometimes. Super villain, superhero, whatever. How old is Alistair again? He'll be eight this month. Damn. He's getting up there. Yeah, he is. He what is. year was he born? 2014. He and Copper are the same age. Same age-ish. Copper, the man. Um, we have to talk about something. Speaking about parents and kids, something I'm really fucking pissed off about. I gotta be honest with you. No, you're not. No, you're not. I am you, you can't super be. pissed off. You cannot what? be. Yeah, uh, let them know. Because this is... I, I'm... Very upset with your take already. We'll take a we'll take a break on the other side. It's the big deal of the day. Let's go. Okay, big deal of the day slash is this fucked up? We have to talk about this. The put your shoes on challenge. It's parents telling their kids to back them up in a fight at a new TikTok trend. The viral online trend sees parents rush up to their children and ask them to put on their shoes in order to fight another child outside for them, producing some unpredictable responses. The children are racking up millions of views. Often the parents will reveal that they are set to fight another parent who has seemingly brought their child as well. Here's some audio of the challenge. Put your shoes on because I got to go fight someone's Thea. So I need you to come with me. 
in case you have to fight her nephew, okay? I can't. Why not? <laughs> Today? Yeah. <laughs> Is that okay? No, um, is it normal? No, I have to fight someone's Thea. This Thea? No, 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 someone else's Thea. Someone else's Thea? Yeah. So I need you to help me fight in case her, she brings her nephew. I need you to fight him. I can't. <laughs> Why not? Because I need to go to Target. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you put your shoes on? Because I have to go to Target. Oh, I need you to put your shoes on. I'm finna go beat up this girl, and if her daughter jump in, I need you to handle her daughter. Let's go. Put your shoes on. I don't say that. Cause... But who this girl right now fighting? Sonali, I need you to go put your shoes on right now. Why? Because I'm about to go fight somebody, and I need you to fight their daughter if I'm fighting somebody. Come on. <laughs> Okay, that's enough. There was one that was really heartbreaking. There was a father, and it, I, I swear to God, it almost makes me want to cry. There was a father who told his son, uh, put your shoes on, we're going to go fight. And the son is like, I'll go fight, but just to let you know, I always lose fights, Dad. I'm like, oh my God. And that's another <laughs> issue. That has nothing to do with the challenge. It's a whole other conversation. Oh, excuse me. It does have to do with the challenge. This challenge is... Fucking despicable. Oh my gosh. It's despicable. No. Okay. Go ahead. Say why it's so despicable. I'll tell you, you why. You all people. I, you of all people. I cannot believe you are this sensitive. I okay, cannot so, believe you're this sensitive about right. it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, because, so look. If you out there, you've been in a fight before. If you've been in a fight before, don't matter how many fights you've been in. Obviously, we know those we know those people that grew up with us that like to hurt people. But like, when you feel danger, there's a jolt in your body where you're like, oh my God, this is real. I gotta go do this. Right? Or there's a point, especially when you have in your first couple of fights where you're like, there's no way out. I gotta fight. I gotta fight. There's no, boom, it's time to get busy. There's no way out. Your parent Giving you that feeling because you got to go outside and fight for TikTok. The little feeling that you like, oh, my God, I got to go out and hurt the, the little shock of fear, the little for nothing for TikTok. That's demented. Like, I don't, like for TikTok. That's demented. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. So most of those people have not been in a fight. And you could tell that like. Outside of the, the response that you just gave me about the kid who's like, I'm, I mostly lose them. So he probably has a different experience. Most of them were confused and were like, cause like they don't fight and they were asking questions. And I mean, so many people are doing this. I want to do this with my nephews. They're not going to find that <laughs> feeling. So crazy. Man. They're not going to have, and I'm not even a person who's trying to go viral. I think it, I want to see their reaction. Like, they're not, they're not, they've never been in a fight before. And I think it's funny. I love the kids who are down, who are like, say no more, like putting their shoes on and ready to go. Yeah. It would only be an issue to me if this is something that continued and they had them put their shoes on and they hyped them up and they took them outside and they're standing out there waiting. But immediately, it doesn't last longer than a minute. They're like, I'm just kidding. Then to me, people who have a problem with this are being overly sensitive and are analyzing this in a way that it shouldn't be analyzed. This isn't one of those TikTok trends that's going too far. It's a joke. It lasts a minute or less. It's not traumatizing. It doesn't have long-term effects. Chill out. There are way more things to be bothered by on TikTok than this. This is not that big of a deal. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. These kids' brains aren't developed yet. And oh, we have to take stop. more care of them. I'm, how I'm how dumb real. do you think seven and eight year olds are? They're <laughs> like, pretty their fucking dumb. Their brains aren't developed yet. Their brains are certainly not developed yet. This is science. Donnie, real quick, jump in. Is the brain of an eight year old kid developed yet? No. Thank you, Donnie. That's enough. So, 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 wow. so the What the is reason, Donnie's the, the, take on this? Ask Donnie, Donnie's take. Donnie, what's your take? Uh, I'm with Van on this. I think it's fucked up. Um, <laughs> but it can be two things at once. It can be fucked up. Oh, she left. <laughs> Wait, you left the chat? <laughs> oh, I just took my camera.
camera. I just took my camera away. That gave me a jolt of fear. Oh, no. that, that, see? See? You traumatized Donnie. I just took my camera away. But go ahead, Donnie. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, it can be two things at once. It can be fucked up, but also hilarious. Because I'm not going to lie, I took some great joy out of watching these these clips. So I'm glad that these parents traumatized their kids. But I myself <laughs> would not do that. So look, it, most things that are fucked up are funny. I'm not gonna lie; it's not. It is funny. I just want to know where this clout based society is gonna is gonna go. Where, when is this gonna stop? Like, where is what's the limit? To I think the limit on this one would have been giving somebody a kid a weapon, right? If you're like, hold this knife. We're about to go out here. Like, that's that's too far. (laughs) That's too far. But telling someone to put their shoes on, I did see one video where a little girl looked so discombobulated and she got up to start doing it and the mom followed her and then she came around the corner and she was like, I don't want to fight. And the mom was like, immediately was like, Oh my gosh, no. And then the next clip, the mom's holding her and she's like, you don't want to help me out? She's like, "Uh uh-uh. And it's funny. So the mom showed that the daughter- It's not funny. But wait, the mom showed- But the mom showed that the daughter was okay. And she was like, I'm telling her it was a joke. No, look- like, I'm telling her maybe it was a joke. She made her I'm, baby I cry for think, no reason. I text my sister, who who can uh-huh. be very sensitive about these things. I text my sister. She's going to be mad that I said this because she listens to every episode. Uh-huh. I text my sister and I said, have you seen the um the, the, the kid challenge just going out with the parents and the shoes and the fighting? I was like, I want to do this with the boys. And she laughed. And she was like, okay. I don't know, when they come here in a couple of weeks. Look, I'm not about to judge people. but It'll be played out by then. By then, it won't be... But then exactly, because I'm not trying to go viral, but I think it's I'm I think it's funny to watch. Then, I would have a be dark hole with it. It by then it'll be something even more traumatizing. It'll be like the we go on to R. Kelly's house challenge. Exactly, people or people if, will be walking up to their kids. Hey, you guys, we about to go to R. Kelly's house. How do you feel? Oh, the girl, he's creepy. Get in the car. It'll be something like that, or the we hide the body challenge. Hey, I just killed your father. Guys, come help me hide the body. Well, yuck, yuck for Twitter. I don't, I don't get it. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. Um, I think that if you made it too close to a real life situation is where it's drawing the line. I think putting weapons in the hands, I think, and I'm just giving a scenario. If somebody, if there was a effed up challenge about like school shootings or something like that, that to me is where you're like, that's way too far. Can you imagine somebody like this to me did not hit those levels. You think it did. By the face you're making, you're telling me that you think it did. I'm saying that I don't see the point. It's, it's, I don't see the How point. How many videos did you watch? I didn't watch any of them. No, because you gave an example. Wait, no, I, that one just came across my feed because it was on Instagram. So you're right, I did watch the one, but I didn't watch any of them. I swear on my dad. Oh, I, be- I believe you that you did. Yeah, but Donnie well, I, did. I, Donnie did. I no, did. I'm not, I'm not, so I'm not the, judging nobody. So the I'm point just saying. is, when you're like, you don't get the point of it, Donnie and I were entertained. There you go. That was the point. I feel you. <laughs> Look, this is all I'm saying, man. Hey, hey, Cloud is a hell of a drug. And it to could go too you, far. You guys, you guys got your kids. You know what this is? I got my hand right here, Rachel. This is yeah, a- Yeah, the face roller. No, it's not a face roller. It's for oh. my feet. Mm-hmm. Well, get it away from your face. It's for the bottom of my feet. And I've been, so I was in here. By the way, last thing I'll say about the kids. Hey, parents, be responsible. All right? Traumatizing these kids. And they're going to leave and go play Fortnite, blow it, somebody's head off on Fortnite. Stop. It's trauma, trauma, trauma. Anyway. It um, could go too far. This challenge is not. But please explain I got, the feet. So I got this me. thing for my feet. All right? This thing right here. Because the bottom of my left foot is like. It's crusty, the clown, man. It's crust. It's crusty. It's like, for some reason, like that heel just would be crusty. I go get a pedicure, it's still crusty. So I took this little grinder thing and I bought it off Amazon and I was like, you know, grinding my foot. Have you ever used one of these on your feet? Uh uh-uh. You haven't? I'm using a grinder thing and it's foot particles spraying all into the air. <laughs> like, like. Like the Martin episode. You got to yeah. go to work on Myra's feet. It's, it's yeah. a sandblaster. It's a it's sandblaster. A sandblaster. <laughs> and it's like, and it's like the it's like I'm cutting into stone. And I don't even, and the thing is, I don't even feel it. I'm like, God 
Damn, man. So it works. But it really was a. Uh, it work. It really does work. All right. Um, it really does work. I'm gonna say uh, something. Jill, what I'm you gonna need say? you. I'm gonna need you to send me the link. Oh yeah, you want this? I got some hard heels. I'm not oh. even gonna lie. I got some hard heels. I need you to send me the link. Lotion. Vaseline isn't working. My not, my work my feet my feet are doing something crazy out here in this desert. Yeah, and I need I need you to send me the link. All jokes aside, I need the sandblaster. Let me ask you a question. How about I just let you borrow this one? That's okay. You can just, <laughs> hey Rachel, come on, man. It's we we family, nigga. You Here, use it. The- Listen, you might see my heels and might not want that to happen. Oh, that's true. That's true. You never know. <laughs> um, Jill Biden. God damn, Biden is struggling, man. So Jill Biden made some comments during a conference in San Antonio for the Latino Civil Rights and Advocacy Organization, Unidos UA, where she commented on diversity of the community and the work of Raul Isergay. Isagera. Okay. Thank you, okay. Donnie. Uh, the commentary on the work of Raul Isaguera. This is what she had to say. But we can't get those things on our own. Raul helped build this organization with the understanding that the diversity of this community, as distinct as the Bogodas of the Bronx, as beautiful as the blossoms of Miami, and as unique as the breakfast tacos here in San Antonio. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. Wait, wait, wait. In that clip, when she said it, there was silence, right? Right, Donnie? Yeah. There was there was complete silence. silence. Yeah. Do we have the clip where she before tried to say si puede? Oh, let me find that. Hold on. Because this isn't a one-off, <laughs> is what I need people to understand. Okay, so and I'm statement- saying it the correct way, but go ahead. In a statement on Monday, the National Association of Hispanic Journalists called on the First Lady and her speechwriting team to take the time in the future to better understand the complexities of our people and communities. Adding, we are not tacos. (laughs) And do not (laughs) reduce us to stereotypes. I'm sorry, man. Like, how in the fuck? Do you go up there on the stage and call some people tacos, man? Like and bogadas. And bogadas. Like, it's bodegas, first of all. Donnie, play the clip. So say it with me. Si se puede. The future <laughs> Okay, wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, guys. There's, there's, a, there's a lesson here. I have a lesson. I have something to say to white people. Don't do the extra shit. Just do <laughs> to the regular shit. You know, like it shows how culturally out of touch you are. Very when, much so. You know, I'll give you an example. Like, we're gonna play basketball, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Say I invite somebody to play basketball. He doesn't know how it goes on a basketball court. I wanna play basketball right now. I'm looking to cause that I throw on the shirt. I throw on uh, some shoes and I throw on my my um, my shorts and I go out to the basketball court because I play basketball all the time. This is what I do. So I'm comfortable oh. in the ba- at, at basketball or boxing, right? Shut up, Rachel. Or or <laughs> or, or or boxing. I go out there, I put my gloves sure. on, I put some shorts on, I wear my boxing shoes, I'm comfortable there. Now you invite somebody who's never been before, and right away they're worried about the fit. So what do they do? They go to Foot Locker. Mm-hmm. They get goggles. <laughs> they get they get wristbands. They get knee bands. They get they buy a new pair of kicks, and they come out there looking like a fucking basketball astronaut. 
<laughs> and we look at you like it's crazy. It's one. That to me is how white people act sometimes when they show up at these spots. Just wear your gym shorts, come to the Just thing, and be regular. Why you got? You ain't got to call the people tacos. You ain't got to call them tacos. Like they know they tacos good. They don't need you to tell them. Like get up there and tell them how you gonna help out. Pack your bags. Get the fuck out of town. <laughs> Just be you. Just please. And especially if this has happened to you before where you have tried and failed when you try to relate to the Latino community. Don't like just stop. And she really thought she was funny. If you watch the clip after she said the taco, she laughed. No one else did. It was a there was an awkward silence. Jill, I, I don't know if they're having if, if I know a lot of people have um, exited the by an administration. I don't know if her speech speech writer was one of those people, but I don't know who's writing these speeches, but that should have never been approved. And if it was an ad lib, even worse, Jill, this was not it. And we're laughing, but if it offended, and it did, the Latino community, then it's wrong. It's wrong. We're laughing at how ridiculous it is and how yeah. ludicrous, how ludicrous it is at the fact that she thought that this was okay. And it just shows how out of touch you are with the community. You ain't got nobody that could have told you that that was not okay. You could, you literally reduced them to tacos and bodegas and, and whatever she said about Miami. The do you flowers. remember when, when you remember when Trump had the tostada? Do you remember that? On Instagram? Yeah. And he had yeah. the tostada and he was like, yo, I'm eating a tostada. Yeah. It's really dehumanizing. Yeah. To reduce our Latin brothers and sisters down yes. to cumin right it's it's dehumanizing that uh, guys what would be the equivalent to doing that to, to our culture what three things would she have said oh, to our fried to, fried chicken watermelon black to the fried peas. chicken of the south i'm to telling the, you to, just consider that to, consider consider how that's mad what you we need to do yeah no that's what i'm saying Put yourself in the in in like the shoes, as you said, of our Latino brothers and sisters. Put in black references or things that are stereo that are supposed to be stereotypical to the black community. We would be hot, okay? So this shouldn't Jill shouldn't get a pass for this. And I Hell don't like, no. And I don't like that her spokesperson said something instead of Jill. If I'm if I'm getting this right and correct me if I'm wrong, Tani, I believe her spokesperson came out and said something instead of Jill actually apologizing. Yeah, yeah you're right. And yeah, sometimes, to be honest with that's you, this bad. is- That's tacky. And, and sometimes this is left privilege. Sometimes I gotta, I gotta be honest with you, sometimes mm. this is left privilege. You know, if- if You ain't if, black. That's You that's ain't black. <laughs> you sometimes ain't black. This is, a, this is left privilege. You guys, you, 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 it, it, on either side, there is a, a special- sort of there's a special fog of cultural insensitivity that whiteness is uh in proximity to this fog of of offensive language and fucked up shit and that fog is as heavy on the left as it is on the right i know it's hard for people to to, to come to terms with that but but it's true okay speaking of um let's get back to to talking about the real villains in america um the Steve Bannons of the world. Mother Jones has audio where Steve Bannon, you guys, let's take a pause for a second. Later on in this podcast, we're going to talk about the fact that Orlando Brown said that Bow Wow has good pussy. That's funny. I'm not saying that that's not funny. But while we're talking about things, other things that are funny and pop culture relevant, the pop culture literally pop culturally relevant. I don't know if that's even a word. Uh, the fate of the democracy is being ballied about and litigated in Washington. This is Steve Bannon. 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 This is Steve Bannon uh, talking to a group of Trump associates prior to January 6th, prior to all the fracas that happened with the election and everything. This is Steve Bannon being dead on balls accurate 
about how Donald Trump might handle mm. losing the 2020 election. Donnie? And what Trump's going to do is just declare victory, right? He's going to declare victory. But that doesn't mean he's the winner. He's just going to say he's the winner. The Democrats, more of our people vote early that count. Theirs vote in mail. And so they're going to have a natural disadvantage, and Trump's going to take advantage of it. That's our strategy. He's going to declare himself a winner. So when you wake up Wednesday morning, it's going to be a firestorm. We're going to have Antifa crazy, the media crazy, the courts are crazy, and Trump's going to be sitting there mocking, tweeting shit out. You lose. <laughs> I'm the winner. I'm the king. And he'll be all over. He'll be, he'll be going, where's Hunter? Is Hunter on a crack pipe? I mean, no. He'll be, because then it doesn't matter. Remember, here's the thing. After then, Trump never has to go to a voter again. He's going to fire Ray, the FBI director, and fire the scene. and say, fuck you. How about that? Because he's never going to, he's, he's done his last election. Oh, he's going to be off the chain. He's going to be crazy. Also, also, also if, Trump is, if Trump is losing by 10 or 11 o'clock at night, it's going to be even crazier. You know, he, no, because he's going to sit right there and say they stole it. I'm, yeah. court, uh, Agree. I'm directing the attorney general mm. to shut down all ballot places in all 50 states. It's going to be no. <laughs> he's not going out easy. Trump, if Biden's winning, mm. Trump is going to do some crazy shit. <clears throat> if Biden's winning, Trump's going to do some crazy shit. <clears throat> now, was he speculating what would happen or was this he saying he knew this was going to happen? If if that's speculation, then he is Nostradamus. Hmm. If that's speculation, then I need to call Steve Bannon and get the lottery numbers for him. He gave <laughs> us a playbook on what the yeah, response did. from the White House would be. Not only what it would be in the short term, but in the long term. To me, there is no absolutely zero way that this strategy and this sort of confluence of different options wasn't discussed amongst Trump, his closest allies, and other people who had knowledge about his plans um, after the election. It's, first of all, are a lot of people talking about this? Because I didn't see it until you posted it. Now, I've been in a little bit of a hole with work, but still. Are people talking about this one or is this something that's just getting buried in the rest of like, oh, January 6th talk and the and the, you know, like in the committee and all of that. And the it's my question to you. It's um, out there. People really talking <clears throat> about it because I, I posted don't, it in, in hopes that people will really knew. talk about it. Uh, I know that Steve Bannon is due to. You know, uh, appear here pretty soon. Um, he's on trial Monday for criminal contempt. After he ignored a subpoena last year from the House Select Committee that is investigating uh, January 6th, which goes to January 6th committee. So he's uh, he's going to be on trial for that. Um, but in my continuous voracious need to be up on everything that's happened happening in the um, in the hearings, I came across it. I don't know how much push so, this is getting other places. But I mean, I saw it. It wasn't, I didn't have to dig for it. It was on, R. Melber had it. So it was on like MSNBC and stuff. So here's my thing. In the grand scheme of things, how much of a splash is this really going to have? Because I'm not going to have like, any splash if we don't make a lake for it. Well, here's my thing. At this point, the people who are listening to that, most like us aren't surprised that this was said. It's shocking that it's recorded and it's just now coming out, but we're not surprised that Steve Bannon said something like that. The people who are the extremists who want to believe everything Trump is doing are just going to say, oh, he, it was speculation and, 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 and Trump was, you know, it turned out to be true because this election was rigged. I almost feel like this, as damning as this audio recording is in the grand scheme of things, People are going to continue to believe what they want to believe because it's not like it's not obvious at this point that the election was not rigged and people are still choosing to believe that kind of information. They will come up with something to explain, even though it might not be logical, as to why this recording came out. Oh, it's a fake recording. 
oh, Steve Bannon was just kidding. Oh, Rachel, he was just speculating. Rachel, you're navigating the Kook River. I'm all in it. You're in a boat and you're you got an oar and you're Dude. on Kook River. You're navigating the Kook River. Fuck the Kooks. I'm in it. I'm in it. Can't 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 change your mind on the Kooks, Rachel. I agree. But it's not about uh, navigating the Kook River. We're not going to swim in Kook River. We're not going to rowboat in Kook River. We're not taking the big Mark Twain S steamboat down Kook River. <laughs> Can't do anything in Kook River. What this has to be is energizing to the people that are on the bank watching the Kooks. They have to have the information. I'm not talking about the people... The people out whose minds I can't change anymore, fuck them. You don't think that climate change is a real deal? I can't talk to you. I need the people who might believe that climate change is real to be even more active than what they would be. So you're, you're right. Mm. The kooks, the kooks are out. We're, we can't we can't swim down Kook River. We can't navigate them. Do you think there are people who are really in between? I feel like people either think that the election was rigged or it wasn't. And people who are still voting on Repu like for Republicans and Trump, it's because of, of issues or just aligning themselves with the party. I believe there are Pro Republicans who believed it wasn't rigged and are still voting Republican. I believe it's either black, it's black and white at this point. I don't think there's anybody in between when it comes to the election. You're right. You're right. But I do think that there are people that still believe that the election, um, how about this? I think that there are people that know that the election wasn't stolen. Uh -huh. And they don't care enough. Mm. What I need to do is to make the people who are not with the kooks care more. Okay. So I need them to know exactly how uh, purposeful the steal was because they were trying to steal something, not um, not the other side that won the election. And I need to know exactly. I need them to know exactly how desperate the times are so they can meet the moment. So that's why stuff like this is important. It's not important yeah. for the kooks. Because even if there's somebody whose mind might be changed, it really doesn't matter. I'm talking about all this information needs to come out. So I feel like people need to know what they're up against. But I understand. I understand what you're talking about. You know, mm -hmm. I, I get it. Mm -hmm. Don't. Don't swim in Kook River, though. All right. Uh, the House passed a bipartisan bill to create active shooter, an active shooter alert system. Mm-hmm. Legislation Wednesday that would create an Amber Alert like system for active shooter situations. 260 to 169 vote. Lawmakers approved the Active Shooter Act, which was sponsored by uh, a bunch of different people. I'm not going to read all their goddamn names. Um, <clears throat> nearly all votes in, op in opposition were Republicans. Interesting. With the exception of Democratic Representative Ron Kind of Wisconsin, who is not running for re election. Is going to allow law enforcement to deploy the alert system in emergency situations and notify the public about active shooters. Rach. How could you vote against this? Like, that's when I saw this, it's like, what could possibly be in your being? Now, do I think that this necessarily helps? Maybe. You know, like it, maybe with, you know, I think this is a step forward. I don't think that this is resolving the bigger issue, but it's a step towards helping, you know, in a situation where there's an active shooter. But the fact that there are 169 people who voted against it, please help me understand why. What could you possibly find wrong with a bill that alerts people that there is an active shooter? What could be wrong against it? Is there something deep embedded within this bill that we're not catching? I'm not understanding it. It just shows how ridiculous people are about voting for with party lines because of who put the bill forward. This is ridiculous, y'all. This is a bipartisan bill. It should be so simple. This should have gone through in a, in a unanimous way. I, I, I don't understand what we're doing here. So not I read that the, I think that this is how... Oh, go ahead. You read the bill. So I read the bill. It's a okay. quick read. Um, on its face, the bill seems like putting a Band-Aid over a slash from Freddy Krueger. Mm -hmm, and maybe mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things, it is. But there are some interesting things in the uh -oh. bill. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There are some interesting things in the bill that pique 
my interest. What they cause you to cause you to vote no. Well, not that will cause me to vote no. That okay. actually makes me think that the bill in and of itself. Because when I think about stopping <clears throat> mass shooters, I think about gun control like everybody else does, right? And I think that at proximity to to certain weapons, um, and their place in our communities in our society are eventually going to be the our willingness to confront that issue is eventually going to be what what tells the, the the story on how we deal with active shooters however i do think that this bill actually is useful i think it does a couple of interesting things i'm not gonna lie i think number one uh it federalizes it to a degree and starts a network of people to deal with it and in that network of people there ends up becoming an actual coordinator in charge of this uh, active shooting warning sign. And that's there's a panel of people from different places in the government that are looking into how best to respond to these things and how best to deal with them. And their protocols have to be uh, updated every five years. They have to kind of look at their membership uh, like uh, at, a, to, at a certain amount of time every time and like make sure that they are completely in the know uh, on this particular phenomenon, how it affects America. And to be honest with you, like there's a mental health aspect to it in terms oh, of wow. studying that there's, you know, so look, what I think though is that this is not at all a solution to the problem, but I do think it centralizes the response to this really American uh, phenomenon in a, in a, not a positive way, but in a, I don't know. It, I think it's useful. It's it, it's useful if it's if the people that are involved in this, if mm-hmm. they are, if they're coming into this in good faith. I actually think that this is better than having nothing because more than anything, what I want, and I've talked about this before, is what I want is this to be studied and researched to the point to where we can turn to some group or somebody and ask them for answers to this specific problem. And right now, there's such a gumbo of issues that are caught up into this Mm -hmm. that it's fragmented. It doesn't seem, there's not a holistic approach to dealing with this. And this is attempting to begin that conversation. Now, at the end of the day, being that this is bipartisan, I don't know how... I don't know how willing this group or this bill, the people that are going to be involved in this, this panel or this uh, coordinator, whomever it's going to be, is going to be to to take the guns into consideration here. I don't know mm-hmm. how much it's going to be, but at least there's somebody to talk to. Okay. And if you read the bill, I would I would encourage everyone to read the bill. It is HR six five thirty eight. It is um. It's right there. You can go on congress.com bill, 117th Congress, House Bill 6538. You can read it right there. Uh, you can get the the um, the whole up and down of it. It's very short. It's one page long. Uh, it, it's it's pretty easy to understand. And you can see that it's not it's not nothing. It's not the answer. But I when I when I looked at it, I was pleasantly surprised at what I felt like it addressed. I'm gonna be honest with you. So, you know, and it it actually uh of course in any bill it makes available funds to 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 deal with this to to deal with how the warnings can get better how to have people in there to have mental health discussions and how to do all of that it's by far not the answer it's not close to being the answer but i actually was pleasantly surprised when i read the bill the scope is not that bad to me uh, and i'm not an expert on the subject well but which is why I don't understand why so many people voted against it. Yes. Yes. But I didn't read it. <laughs> the, la, thank like you the, for thank you for doing the work, man. Oh, uh, do you know what you're supposed to do in a nuclear uh, attack? Um, duck and cover. You know what? I don't want to do this topic. Guys, I'm not. I'm not. You know, it's the weekend's not, coming up. There's not. There's not a. It's. It's not. It's not a lot. I, but I do it's think that 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 is uh, terrifying. 
Yeah, it's terrifying. We might as well have PSAs terrifying. about aliens at this point. That's terrifying oh, we might, to me. Or, 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 or we might as well terrify our kids for TikTok. Same thing. All right. Um, I can't see. <laughs> Orlando Brown. was on a podcast with Funny Marco, who's a very funny guy. And they went back and forth. And this back and forth had the internet in its clutches. Play the, play the audio, Donnie. When's the last time you watched 106 in Park? When last time it was hot. What's the, weather? When, What's the weather today, y'all? When Little Bow Wow was on there. You got a problem with Little Bow Wow? I ain't got a problem with Little Bow Wow. Little Bow Wow got some bomb ass pussy. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay, man. You know, uh, you know what I'm saying, man. I, what? Okay, let me I ask just, you this. Okay, let me ask you this. What do you think he means by that? I can't. Okay, first off, when I when I read this, I read it as Orlando Jones instead of Orlando. Oh my God. Brown, and I was very confused. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why, what is, is Orlando Brown or Jones okay? I just didn't, I, and then I was like, oh my gosh, I was thinking of the wrong Orlando. Anyways, I'm not going to tell you what I think he meant because I don't think he's okay. So I, I'm not even going to try to make it logical or say what I think he was trying to say. I don't, he's not with us. He's not with right. us. He's not right. okay. And I think that was painfully evident when in the silence. I mean, like, Marco's like, what? Yeah. What do you think? Would you, did you figure out what he meant by that? Do you no, think you know what he was know. trying to say? No. Bow Wow responded. Bow Wow said, since when legends got to speak on fuckery, Bow Wow refers to himself as a legend, which I agree Noted. with. Noted. Um, I'm filming my new TV show as we speak. And preparing for a sold out show at the O2 Arena for the Millennium Show in London. Bow Wow's Prosperous Man. I'm a 35 year old. That's fucking crazy. I never knew that he was that close to me in age. That's fucking crazy. Rachel, you basically little Bow Wow. I, I, I would go to a millenni the millennial tour, a millennium yeah. tour, whatever it's called. Uh, I'm a 35 year old father. I don't play them type of games. You do know this Bow Wow talking to you talking to, right? I'm a boy. Um, but he said Orlando Brown was bugged the fuck out and wilding. Says that the 34-year-old actor is on drugs and need help. Tweet out, but you know that dude really need help. You know what I'm saying? That's why we ain't tripping on him. Nobody taking him serious. It's sad because he had the potential to be great. It's sad, them drugs. Uh, so I remember some time ago, when there was a video of Orlando Brown rapping in church. Absolutely. And it, and it seemed as if he was doing a little bit better and he was mm -hmm. better. Uh, it seems as if whatever, whatever was going right for him at that point is now going wrong for him again. He has doubled down on it saying that he is in fact certain that Lil Bow Wow has some bomb ass pussy. So, I, I didn't watch the whole interview. Was he like this the entire interview? Um, more or did, less. Did you think the interview was okay, and he or he was okay until he said this? Um, no. Okay. Okay. No, people don't normally snack on during the interview. You know, eating stuff out of a wrapper and all of that stuff. Uh, look, I'll tell you guys this. I know everybody's having a fun time with this. Uh. And this is not far away. When I was growing up, whenever you would go into the, uh, whenever you go into the Circle K right there off Gardeer, it's like Gardeer and GSRI. Whenever you would go into the Circle K, there'd be a guy out there, and he was obviously on drugs. Most likely, he was a crackhead, and he would ask you for money. You know, you can give him money if you want it. Uh, but some people, before they gave him the money, they would ask him to dance, and he would dance for you. And he could dance. It wasn't like not entertaining. We've all seen this before. We've seen addicts in our neighborhoods dancing 
and cutting the fool. Sometimes they could rap. Sometimes they, you know, do all kinds of stuff and like, you know, hey, come over here and dance for us. You give them five dollars, you make them dance, and then you laugh. It was never funny, and this isn't funny. You know what I mean? It's like no, it's not funny. This like I, I hate to be the wet blanket on this and what happened earlier, but as happy as we were for Orlando Brown um, when he was doing better, we should be as concerned as we are now. And we're, I think we should be past the point in our society where we make the addicts dance for us. So Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying that that line is not funny because when you watch it, it catches you off guard. I mean, Marco, he didn't laugh. He was like, what? Yeah. Yeah. But just be careful. Like we, we we shouldn't be making the addicts dance anymore. We should be better than that. Uh let's take a break real quick. How you feel about the Britney Griner thing now? I really liked our discussion on it. And I like that we, you know, we talked to discuss the fact that people are calling out Biden to do a lot of things. And Biden has since reached out to her wife and you know, Kamala Harris, I think, was doing something about it. But we talked about because it is so high profile, I do think that there is some level of Biden to respond in some way, even if he doesn't have the answers to getting her out, at least let people know because it is so high profile that you're trying. So I, I mean, I, when you ask me how I feel about it, you know, I hope that there is some way that they can bring her home as well as some of the other detainees who are there as well. But I also liked our dialogue about the fact that she did commit a crime. And I think that some people aren't focusing on that and are just looking at this like she's an American citizen. She's trapped in this. They look at it as trapped instead of in prison. And that might be controversial to say it that way. But she's imprisoned in this foreign country. Bring her home. So I, I like that we hit different sides of it rather than just saying, you know, she's a basketball player, a black woman stuck over there, American citizen, bring her home. Well said. So the reality is that the punishment is, in our opinion, as Americans, it is uh, far too severe for the crime. Mm -hmm. We know that. She's been Mm -hmm. in jail 100 plus days for having a half gram of marijuana residue or in a pen. Like like hash or something. Yeah. Yeah, So it's not even, you know. Um, it is illegal there. I think that so LeBron James talked about this. He uh oh well this is what he said. Check it out. Brittany Griner, she is in Russia. She's been there over 110 days. Now how can she feel like America has her back? I would be feeling like, do I even want to go back to America? Hmm. So LeBron James, why would you want to go back to America? Love LeBron. This is a ridiculous statement. Um of course she wants to come back to America. She wants to come back to America because this is where she's from. It has nothing to do with being patriotic. Her wife is here. Right. Okay. Uh, and at the same time, she probably wants to go anywhere other than where she is right now. So it wasn't <laughs> right. a well, very well thought out statement by LeBron. Eh, whatever. You win some, you lose some. Well, I, do I think- just... <sighs> It's very obvious what he was saying in that moment and what his sentiments were. So I just thought it was a little uh, that he tried to backtrack and was like, no, that's not what I mean. You know, like kind of try to compliment. Let me try to find his tweet where he's like, my comments on the shop regarding Brittany Griner, it wasn't knocking our beautiful country. I was just simply saying how she probably feels emotionally, along with so many other emotions, thoughts, et cetera, inside that cage she's been in for over 100 plus days long story short i do believe his sentiment of saying like yeah maybe she feels a certain way that she hasn't been brought home yet and i understand what maybe he was trying to say but the way he said it just comes off it, like not the it's it's like of course she wants to come home here this is do home. you think that do you think that Brittany griner has the right to feel a certain way about not having come home yet like why would she <laughs> at, at, at this particular i'm being honest at this point why would Brittany Griner feel some way? I feel some way about not coming home yet. Ain't nobody in America did nothing that made Brittany Griner's situation what it is. Now you could argue, you could argue that actually, you could argue that perhaps the uh, 
the geopolitical standing of America, America or the tension between America and Russia, sure. uh, or whatever the the it doesn't help that, it. Yeah, that it doesn't help that they are obviously that having an American with a high profile is very valuable to the Russians. But to be honest with you, that's something that she's known since she's been playing in Russia. So, so the reality is, I, I would hate to think that Brittany Griner is somewhere. And I'm not. This is not me being hyper patriotic, but I don't think Brittany Griner has the right to be somewhere in a Russian jail, mad at America. She should be oh. mad at the Russians who are detaining her for a bullshit crime. Like whatever happens on this side is 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 what needs to happen to help get her out. Well, you say that, but there are a lot of Americans who think that by are like mad at by. I mean. Previously, before LeBron even made this comment, he criticized Biden and that he was like that he wasn't doing enough. That that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris needed to be doing more, and they needed to bring her home. Which is why I love you pointing out, like, well, what actually do they have the power to do? And so I do think that there are a lot of Americans who think she should be home and are mad at the government for not bringing her home. So it's not far fetched to say that Brittany might feel the same way, especially yeah. after even reading her letter. It's it's it was it's un- and I don't say this very often, especially you know during this podcast of the whole taco situation, but it it's unfair to the administration to hold them responsible for whether or not they can give Brittany Griner. It just is when you look at the when you look at the facts of every. It just is. It's unfair to hold the administration responsible. There's a lot of other things that it's fair to hold the administration responsible for, but Brittany Griner's situation is not one of them. Having said that, I would love for Brittany the Griner to come home right away, and they need to do whatever they can do to bring her home. But I'm trying to understand where people are getting the idea that in some way Brittany Griner is getting this treatment because she's Brittany Griner. I mean, that's that's just a reality. She's getting this treatment right now because she's Brittany Griner. So I don't know. All right, LeBron, make sure you. Be on your shit there. Herschel Walker's son, Christian Walker. Uh, did you say you did not know I that Christian Walker this. was? Did you didn't know that Christian Walker was Herschel Walker's son? Did you say that? I've never said that. <laughs> that was Donnie. Donnie, jump on. I didn't say that. I said I didn't know Christian Walker was the one involved in this story. Liar. Don, Donnie, before, but, 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 before this was happening, liar. Before this was happening, you said, I didn't know that that was Herschel Walker's son. You right. said, I didn't In know that that story, was Christian. I saw the video and I didn't know that that was Christian Walker that we had talked about previously on the podcast. So I definitely knew that Christian Walker was Herschel Walker's son because we talked about him on Higher Learning. Liar. Get him straight. Get him straight. We have said, previously said, talked said, about said, him. Oh, Donnie is, a, Donnie is a lying right now. <laughs> you yes, he is. He's, you misunderstood me. You were right. Donnie, what you just I, said. I said I didn't know that was Christian Walker referring to the video that we're about to play. No, you said I didn't know that was Herschel Walker's son. And I was like, really? And you're like, yeah, I didn't know that that was. I'm like, you didn't know that that was Herschel Walker, right? Son. The person talking in the video. Donnie is lying, guys. <laughs> he's not trying to like Donnie. Donnie is not. He's not trying to take responsibility for his ignorance of Christian Walker. <laughs> uh, I didn't um, see. I I didn't. Let me hear the clip. So this is what happened. Christian Walker and Kalani, <laughs> shout out to Kalani. They had a, a run in at a Starbucks. Looks like the one off Highland here in LA. I didn't know Christian Walker lived out here. That's scary. Uh, here's the audience. He might be visiting. Yeah. Everyone's entitled to an opinion and you're so rude or you wouldn't be telling barista workers that I'm an asshole. Ma'am. Ma'am, you don't need to tell baristas that I'm an asshole for because I have an opinion. Get your drink and go and go away. I I can have an opinion like everybody else. Why are you entitled to an opinion and not me? You want to tell baristas I'm an asshole? Yeah, I'm telling them to be. Well, guess what? You're you're the asshole. You are an asshole. Get your drink and go. Get your drink and go. You can you can have an opinion. I can have an opinion. If you can have an opinion, I can have an opinion, ma'am. Oh if you can have an opinion, get your drink and go. Mm. Um. Okay. What am I supposed Damn to I. do with that? 
What am I supposed I to do? What am I supposed I to do with this? So Donnie, there's backstory to this. Donnie, what's the backstory? Oh. Apparently, he uh, was upset that that Starbucks on Highland had uh, uh, rainbow flags outside, pride flags. And in response to his complaint about the pride flags, Kalani referred to him as an asshole to the barista. And that's where the video picks up, where he's responding Wait, to that. Isn't he in the community? That's why yeah. it's confusing. Yeah. But he's confusing, right? He's a walking contradiction, right? He, nothing he says makes sense. So, of course, actually, it does more align that he doesn't like the flag and he is in the community because everything he does is just like out, just off, off. Well, that, that, that actually, Donnie, that explanation doesn't help. <laughs> that doesn't explain the situation any better. Yeah. You know what, Christian, he was acting like an asshole in the uh, Starbucks, according to Kalani, and I believe her. She's a nice lady. Uh, but he's right. He does get to have his opinion, and it's our opinion that he's an asshole. And it has nothing, but like, that's your only thing you can say? I'm a, I'm allowed to have an opinion. Okay, yeah. And, and so can you she. Are. It's just- Yeah, it, she thinks you're an asshole. You want to fight about it, nigga? She said, like, she said, like, she, she put your shoes on, 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 like, put your, nigga, put your shoes on, nigga. <laughs> like, nah, you have an opinion. Christian, you have an opinion. You're allowed to have your opinion. We think your opinion makes you an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Put the foot thing down. No, I don't want this is the thing is my scepter. This is this is this is a this is this is uh this is the sound that a lot of people heard coming from their mom's room after they had gone to sleep. <laughs> they, 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 like, <laughs> this is the sound that they heard. Do it again. <laughs> this is the sound that you know kids they go to sleep, they tuck themselves in, they're up reading the comic, and all of a sudden, you know. Single mom, hard day at work. It's Friday night. They hear this. You're so screwed. <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> cut Don't cut it out. <laughs> Leave that in there. God damn it. Mama needs some love too, even if it's self-love. All right, question for you. Let's say that the aliens come down, these aliens that we're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. And the aliens say, we can trade one. We can give them one. Are we giving them Christian or Herschel? Herschel. You're giving them Herschel. Got to. He's the one who's in a position of power. People are laughing at Christian. I'll be honest with you. I'll probably give him Christian. Okay. Herschel's going to lose. Christian... We got so much more of problematic Christian coming. This is a question. This is a, this is a this is a question for the soulless jackals. That the, the aliens come down, and they say that we can give them one. They're gonna take either Christian or Herschel. Which one? Which which one you giving up? Rachel says Herschel. I say Christian. Herschel, like Herschel is almost quaint in his age. He's Herschel made talk it about this far. He's made it this far. People are actually going to the ballots and checking the box for him. Like, this is an easy one. Thought Warriors, it's Herschel. Uh, Detroit is going to reform its cash bail system to end practices that jail people that are too poor to purchase their freedom. This is very important. These reforms are meant to end practices that commonly jail people from low income and black communities and serve as a model for court systems across the U.S. I want you guys to all know something right now. We talk about the idea of private prisons and and we talk about them specifically as these institutions all over the country that are for profit prisons. I have you guys know that there is a whole for profit system that is involved in every prison or jail when it comes to the bail bondsmen. When it comes to bail, cash bail itself, when it comes to the calls that are going in and out of these places, when it comes for the food, when it comes to the to the concessions and all the commissary, all of this stuff is for profit. There are companies, some companies like Armark, other telemarketing uh, telemarketing companies, excuse me, other telecom companies 
that are charging people exorbitant rates to call their families and their loved ones going in calls going in and out of prisons. If you ever made it, made a prison call, this call is whatever, whatever, you know how expensive it is. So it's very important that if we are to have a society where prisons and jails are humane, um, which is the first step to having a society with no prisons or jails, in my opinion, then we have to make sure that we get as much private money out of that as possible because once capitalism gets involved, then people get exploited, okay? And what happened here in Detroit is a fantastic situation. Let's see if it can go if it can go further than that, you know? I have I don't have much to add to that. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And I think that if judges are setting, because what happens in these hearings is that they're arguing, each side is arguing for the amount that should be placed on the defendant for them, whether, or maybe not even an amount. They might be let out on their own uh, uh, recognizant. I think that's what they call it. Ooh, it's been so long. Um, they might be let out on like a, like a PR I think that's what they call it. Oh my gosh. Y'all don't judge me. Y'all are gonna talk about my legal, my legal stuff. It's been too long. And I don't practice criminal. But the judge will ultimately decide the amount of money, right? But they don't have to explain necessarily why in full detail they made that decision. It just smells like, oh, they're a threat to society or oh, they're a flight risk. This is the amount. But what this reform is trying is doing is making them say on the record why they are putting this amount forward in addition to some other things. And I actually think that that's great. The judge has to explain why you as a defendant has to have this amount versus this defendant who might not. And I think that that's great. And I hope it does catch like fire and it's implemented in other cities. You enjoy that. You ever see Rachel, you ever sent money to somebody in jail before? Yep. Really? Yeah. How, how much? I don't remember personal recognizance and bond. Okay, I wasn't that far off. Sorry, I had to look at it because you know thoughtwars are going to eat me up because I couldn't remember the term. Um, They're going to do what? Eat me up because I couldn't remember the term. Oh my god! Whoa! I thought you said the thought words are going to eat you out. I was like, Jesus Christ! What kind of relationships are you having with our thought words? Out <laughs> you know there? what? Donnie, your mind, your mind like... is still on that vibrating foot thing. That's what you're. Donnie, that's where Donnie, you are. Didn't it? Nope. Didn't it sound like she said that? No, I heard it. Fuck you, Donnie. That's why I was like, eat me up, Donnie. <laughs> be honest with you, bro. You're driving a wedge. You're the new. <laughs> like, you're, you're driving a wedge. You know what you said before this podcast, Donnie. What you know that? what you said. You said, I didn't know that that was Herschel Walker's <laughs> oh son. Oh, my God. And we talked about it, Donnie. Let's, let's you know mailbag. what you said. <laughs> he said in mailbag this time. video. In Wrong. this video. I was there. You weren't even there, Rach. You were, you were, you were <laughs> play the mailbag song. Mailbag time. Time to read your letters and then we'll reply to them. Oh, it's mailbag time. Write us with your queries and we'll chime in. All right. So first question comes from the chocolate hand soap on Reddit. Van what? and Rachel. Yeah, I know, right? Van and Rachel, have you ever wanted to undo an interview or is there an interview you want to redo because you screwed it up? Yeah. What's yours, Rachel? It wasn't a full interview. It was a question. So I, um, I, you know, I started doing extra through Zoom. I mean, through COVID. So everything was Zooms, including the award shows. And so what the award shows, these award shows would do is everybody was in a room and you were randomly called on um, to ask your one question. And you had one question and you had to submit it and it and you would listen to other people ask their questions. And even if they asked the same question as you, you were technically were supposed to ask that your question and you got one chance to do it. So during the Oscars, um, not this year, last year, Yeon Gu Jung won for Best Supporting Actress, I believe. And she's extremely accomplished and she's been in over 80 films, but she plays in um, Minati. I don't know if you guys saw that. It was a really good film and she's phenomenal in it. And so she wins this Oscar. So everybody's asking her and Brad Pitt produced this film. So he presents her with the award. She wins it and she's like 
kind of fanning over him and you see them talking. So every question is about Brad Pitt to her, but you can't, she can't see you. She can only hear you. So everybody's asking these questions and that was going to be our question. So she's talking to him. And the question that they wanted me to ask, like my production was like, oh my gosh, we saw you ask you talking to Brad, uh, Brad Pitt. Like, what did he say to you? And what did he smell like? And everybody flipped out over me saying that and said that I was disrespecting her by asking her. That was you? Yes. Asking her what Wait, she smelled. What? Yes, but I'm giving you the background. Like I've never talked about it, but I'm giving you the background on it because we had one question and everybody's question was about Brad Pitt. So I was building off the Brad Pitt of like, yeah, we saw y'all talking. Like, what did he look like? What And and the internet went wild and was calling me. I was disrespectful. And like, how dare I disrespect her career by asking her that question? But my, what was- um, Obviously, put I on, that was you. We talked oh, about it here. Oh, did we? Well, yeah. anyways, what was clipped was my question and not everybody's question about, about about Brad Pitt. So when the way it looked, it looked like I was being disrespectful. But anyways, I wish I could take that back and I wish I could have had a full interview with her, which I did before she won an Oscar and it was lovely. But in that instant, people just took that question and ran with it and I hated it and it made it look like it's something that was not because I, I have a full interview with her where I'm asking her a bunch of different things about her illustrious career and her role in this movie. So anyways, that's the one I would She redo. said she didn't smell him. I'm yeah. not a dog. And her response, she was like, I didn't smell him. I, yeah, she goes, she goes, I don't know. I didn't smell him. I'm not a dog. And obviously in here, people are like, oh, you were next to so-and-so. What did he smell like? But I think with her, it didn't translate the same way and it offended her. And that wasn't my my... I mean, she answered my question, but she said that first. And so I can see how it came off a certain way. Anyways, that's the one that I would redo. That was never my intention, but it was a mistake on my part. I think you meant it. Whatever. Do I you think have you one? owe her. I think you, of course not. I don't make mistakes oh, like that. I'm a professional. Like, I think, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think you owe. I think that was your Jill Biden taco moment. It was not a taco. I didn't say anything in reference moment. to her culture. I don't know. I, I, didn't do, I didn't say anything, but I can see how it's the way that interview deal, was. Man. But I can see how the way the interview was set up, things were lost in translation, and especially how it was clipped. But whatever, it was Ooh, never my intention. Lost was, in translation. Why would there need to be a translation, Rachel? What are you talking about? Why would there need to be a translation? Why has it got to be about translation, Rachel? Because when you're in my interview, my first interview, there was a translator. And this, so in this one, there wasn't. So I, so I do think that it was like, that's something we say here and there. I don't think that it, be, it, it hit the same way. In my first interview you, with her, there was a translator. How were you there and at our party at the same time? Remember, I bolted. I'm, that's why I missed oh. the announcement. Oh. I came, I bolted. I came fresh Oscar makeup, hair, glam. I changed clothes and bolted to your party. That's a lot from, from downtown all the no, way to no. high. No, remember it was at the studio because it was over Zoom. Was so over I Zoom. interviewed. So I'm telling you the whole thing was awkward. It was just a mess. Right. So anyways, that's like the one that I would love to redo because, or I would just let the other, the first interview I did with her stand because it was great. It's a good answer. I've actually, honestly, I've never had one. Like I haven't, but not just because, just because you know, I haven't interviewed as many. Sure, that's people. fine. Van, you're a better interview than me. It's totally fine. It's not true at all. It's totally fine. It's that's what he said, guys. True. That's what he said. That's actually not what I said at all. Um, but I just can't think of one. Uh, all right, what's the next question? All right, next one. Dex Dark on Reddit asks, if you were to follow Tron, a.k.a. Ray J, and name yourself after a sci-fi, what would your name be? Is that what he's named after? Tron, the movie, yeah, Tron. Oh. Yeah. I don't know sci-fis. Uh-huh. Really? Yes. E.T.? You know, that wow. you would name yourself E.T.? No, that would be I'm dope. just saying. E.T. Lindsay. Know. Wow. What a Texas know. name. Yo, that's a really Texas name. E.T. Lindsay. That's like a Texas oil baron. 
Yeah, E.T. that actually Lindsay. really is. That's like, like, that's like a Texas oil. This is this land here belongs to E.T. Lindsay and the Lindsay <laughs> Oil Corporation. I, I would call my, my name would be a space odyssey. That's what I would call myself. Space Odyssey. A Listen, space odyssey. I was interviewing the Russo brothers for the Gray Man movie, which is a good movie. You guys should see. Niggas and, hate that shit, but that's okay. Really? It was. Yeah, it, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, is it out? The people saw it. It's critics, man. Critics. This is critics. Okay. It's anyways, fine. I asked Ryan about joining the MCU, which he said he'd love to do. And then I asked. I told the Russo brothers. He said that, and I said particularly if you guys come back to the MCU. And he said they were like, oh well, that would be great. And then we started talking about what character Ryan would be in the MCU. And you know they named a character that I've never heard of in my entire life. It's something related to um, Thor, Bear, something. Does bear. that sound familiar? Bear. It's like a. It's like more than just that. Bear. But it's related to the Thor world, and God knows it's probably not even Bear. But I think it sounded like that. It, it was. It was like a full name. And he was like, you know, it's a part of the Thor world. And I was like, oh, to the Marvel folks, this is going to be huge. But I've never heard of this name in my life. Let me see. MCU. Uh, well, they, he said he wants to be Ghost Rider. That's who he said he wants to be. But I don't know who they're talking about. Bear. Gosh, I'm going to get this so wrong. I was trying to see if Extra posted the interview. I'm going to find the clip. Extra. Um, All right. Okay, E.T. And you're e. who? And you're who I'm again? A, a Space Odyssey. Okay. Um, All right, last one. E. We'll go to E. Okay. Frito Ben Having asks, what superpower do you think the others, Donnie, Finn, and Rachel, should have based on their personality? Okay, I'll go first. Donnie's person, Donnie should be the ability to tell a lie and then make it true. <laughs> Liar. Wow. <laughs> any lie wow. that Donnie, any lie that Donnie tells comes to reality. Okay. Uh, Rachel's would be invulnerability. She just can't be hurt. She doesn't have any feelings. Invulnerability. Based well, on my personality. <laughs> <laughs> based on your personality. Invulnerability. And mine, in my opinion, I would have the blobs powers. An immovable <laughs> object that can't be moved, can't be hurt because of the blob of gelatinous fat that is around his body. It's impervious to disease, it's impervious to pain. I am the blob. Rachel? No, I'm no, no, I'm not. T I can't top that. I can't top that. You win. <laughs> All right. Do you have an unexpected ally of the week? No. I do not have an unexpected ally of the week this week either. Uh, but I have a special nod to Liz Cheney. I'm not saying she's an unexpected ally of the week, and I'm not giving a Republican the most uh, credit just for doing the least, which is their patriotic duty, which is what she should be doing as a member of the American government. But I do have a lot of respect for Liz Cheney um, for doing something that a lot of the people in her party are refusing to do, which is put the institutions that have made America semi-functional over these last couple of hundred years before whatever popularity or loyalty that she might have in her own party. And I realized that she's Dick Cheney's kid and she represents a different wave and a different wing of problematic people. I get it, the whole thing, but I would be lying if I said that I didn't appreciate the courage that it takes to stand up to all of the people who are supposed to be on your side. So, you know, I'm not a Dick Cheney fan. Obviously, he's basically like Darth Vader, but, um, I am I am somewhat impressed that Liz Cheney sure. is 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 doing what she's doing right now with the January 6th committee, which I implore you guys to be paying more attention to. All right. That's enough. Donnie the liar. Donnie, you have a you don't have an update for us in um in what's going on in, in, at your home with the rabbit that you probably put there now. 
and <laughs> and the snake, which probably doesn't exist? No, I don't. But I have been thinking about uh, this past weekend, real quick. I was in Savannah, Georgia, and uh, my Airbnb was very old. It was built in 1842. There was oh. a sign outside that said "Built in 1842 for Ann Pittman," and the entire time I was there, I just kept thinking about uh, the ghosts that could potentially be there <laughs> and Pittman. And the fact that I was telling my wife this earlier, I, I had several bowel movements in this house and, <laughs> and Pittman, the fuck? I, I, I can only imagine how pissed <laughs> and Pittman would have been that a black man. No, 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 no. Not how pissed she would have been. How, she how pissed she is. Dog. <laughs> And Pittman is somewhere right now. Like I, was not I don't know if you, this. like Charlie. I don't know if you can see this, but it's a nigger <laughs> shitting where your grandmama's room used to be. You should have took a shit on the floor. Like yo, hey no, Andy, you fuck you, there. Andy, you are you okay, there. Donnie? That's great. Honestly, Donnie, that sounds terrifying. Yeah, like you creepy. know that that wasn't that place wasn't for us. Eighteen forty two. Forty two. Twenty plus years of slavery. That house was around for. Crazy. <laughs> Niggas was uh, this is white people was up to no good. Eighteen forty two. Of course. All right. Take the caps off and do not stop learning. I am Van Lathan Jr. And I'm Rachel and Lindsay. Bye guys. <laughs>